so it wasn't, I would say, the greatest, but gradually over the course of the week, we got to know them and we were able to get them more involved and they enjoyed the later days a lot more, which I found very encouraging. That's super, Ben, thank you. And Abby, what about you? What's been some highlights for you this week? Um, well, there's dinner and netball as well in the morning. It's been so far, like I'm actually able to get with the wee locals. Um, but the kids club, um, the kids club was just the best thing for me. Um, it was just so packed and like all the kids were just so lovely and they had so much energy. Um, and like just watching the excitement they had for like getting up and worshiping God, like it was just so amazing to see. And the other um, main highlight for me was the worship at the youth night. Mm. Um, like that whole team, that they're just so talented and like God's presence was just really in that room. And um, I just, I don't know, there was just something so powerful about like worshiping with people who like I barely knew, but I knew that they had the same love for Jesus. And um, yeah, I just thought that was really cool. And um, a verse that I have sort of carried with me this week, it was actually the memory verse for the last couple of days of Kids Club was Joshua 1 verse 9. Um, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is, will be with you wherever you go. That's great. And I'll ask Anna in a wee second to share her highlight. Abby mentioned that memory verse. Every single child was screaming it from the top of their voice. And uh, it's, just a, it's just lovely. We, we saw them. Um, we saw with the parents and chatted with the parents that the, their children were coming home and were telling them the songs, asking them, look up, look, look up My God is a Great Big God on YouTube. Um, they were playing it in their homes, so we're, we're so thankful for that. Anna, tell us a little highlight from, uh, from your point of view this yeah. week. I, really, I loved the um, worship last Sunday, just in church. Like it was so encouraging just to warm welcome. Um, and then I also really enjoyed um, a walk with Craig and his uh, kids on uh, the mountain and then we went and we got pizza for dinner and it was just lovely because we we're so hungry and then um, I just thoroughly benefited and enjoyed from like connecting with the wider community um, yes yesterday at the community Sunday it was just so lovely to see everyone so yeah that's great thank you Natalia maybe you'll share a wee encouragement uh, for for everybody here something that you've learned this week so it has been an incredible week and all of us have been so encouraged not only by the kids, but also by all of you. Everyone has been so welcoming to us and it's really helped us this week. I just want to encourage each and every one of you to continue doing just as you are. I was really nervous coming down to Bali from it, but within the first couple of days, I felt so at home here and that's because of all of you. This Bible verse was made very clear to me this week. It's Matthew 18 verse 20 and it reads, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. With every conversation had, all of us have really felt God's presence this week. All of you were so open to helping us out in any way that you could, whether that could be by catering for us throughout the week or having a chat and just helping us settle in. So thank you for being so open and having us here because we loved every minute of it. Hey, that's awesome. Thanks, Natalia. And Jenna is uh, going to, she's we've, on behalf of our team, have a few thank yous that we'd love to do. So Jenna, what are you here, who and what have you been thankful for? Well, firstly, I'm thankful for everyone who served us food over the week. It's all been amazing, and we've been well fed. And I think I've put on about a stone. I'll be on a <laughs> detox tomorrow. <laughs> it was a lot. It was so nice. Um, so thank you to Rob and Martina and Mary, Gideon and Kelly, Alan and Sandra, and Roz. Um, it was just amazing, and you were all so welcoming to us. Thank you to the church as well for just being so kind and caring and just really letting us um, be a part of your community over the week. Um, yours were really welcoming from the get, like from the first moment we walked in on Sunday. It was just so nice to see you and I think we all just felt really welcomed. Um, thank you as well for Gabrielle for just being with us like every moment of the week and just, I don't think the kids club would be the same without him. Like all of his tips and all his tricks, <laughs> it was really great. Um, thank you as well to all the youth and all the kids and everyone who sent their kids along. It's just been, it wouldn't have been, um, the week we had without all of you and you were just amazing and thank you as well for Craig, Abby and all their family for making us feel welcomed and just all the laughs that we had and we appreciate you all. <laughs> That's awesome, thank you. Uh, we, are, we really truly are so thankful and uh, we meant every word of everything that was said there and not only did um, you share, share uh, food with us or conversation with us, you really shared your life with us 
and um, that was really remarkable and just really beautiful. So thank you very much. I think we're now on to worship. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Um, we're just going to go through a time of worship right now. So if everyone wants to just get up on their feet. All righty. So we're also going to lift the offering now during this time. So we have people to just pass around the offering. Um, and I just pray quickly. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to come together and to just worship you together and to just be in your presence. I pray that we won't take moments like these for granted. Um, and I pray that you continue to be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All righty.
thank you, Lord, for your presence. And thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus that we can go through your presence because it's an open door. Because no one can get to the Father except through him. So thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for opening that door for us.
there's some people in our lives, actually a lot of people in our lives that don't know about the love that God has for them. There are a lot of people that we hang out with that are yet to understand what it means to be loved by God, to be loved by a higher power, which is God, the only higher power, which is God. And sometimes we are in their lives and we're the only ones that can show them that love. We are the only ones that can ever tell them about that love. So I pray that as you go out in your days, the right time the Holy Spirit will provide for you but you should be led and you should feel led to be able to spread that love we can't contain it for ourselves it's for everyone in the world all the 7 billion I don't know it's 8 billion people now a lot of people in the world that need to know that love I pray that I pray that you just be led to spread that No. Oh.
take us in a time of communion here. Um, I'm going to start off by reading 1 Corinthians 10, 16 to 17. Um, because, uh, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Um, so for me, look, reading this, looking back at the past 16 weeks with my team, we all have different backgrounds, different upbringings, and we all come together as one team to come here to serve this church. And without the church, we wouldn't have had anywhere to do, anything to go to, any kids club, without the community, and without Bally Fermit as well. And we all have had to come together as one through just love through Christ and just because of all of this we have been able we are God's kingdom and his people and we're all one in the body of Christ and we all have to show this as a team through each other and as we take the wine to represent the blood of Christ and the bread to represent his body we all show how we are one with Christ and that without being together as a team with us as a team from Exodus, with Craig and his family, and the Church of Valley Fermi, and everyone who has helped us, none of this would be possible. Uh, yeah, so. So if everyone wants to take the bread and the wine.
righteousness alone faultless and firm before the throne cause Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Okay. Through whatever we're going through, you are the Lord of all. You're the one that can help us, God. Thank you, Lord, that whatever hardships that we're going through, whatever, you know, good things that we're going through, thank you, Lord, for being in the center of everything. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, because you know that you're present in every step that we take. And you know where we're destined to go, and you know where we're going. And I pray, Lord, that we, you know, trust your process, we trust your plan, and we trust in the things that you want because the things that you have for us are better than what we could have for ourselves. And what we imagine ourselves doing could be something completely opposite to what you imagine us doing. So I pray that we are able to focus on you and focus on the plans you have for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, good morning. Um, first off, just want to say, oh, kids, yes, uh, Sunday school. Um, if you'd like to follow Esther, um, you're free to go. <laughs> just while they're leaving, a um, little bit about myself. Um, hello, my name's James, lovely to meet you all. Um, if I haven't had the chance to get to meet to you or talk to you, I'll be about after service. Please, please come and, and say hi and introduce yourself. Um, I have been very privileged and blessed to have grown up in a Christian household. Um, church has been a massive part in our lives. Um, Sunday school, um, also going to kids clubs, very, very similar to what we've ran this week. Um, I actually became a Christian at a kids club um, in a small place on the north coast of Northern Ireland called Castle Rock. Um, probably never heard of it. Most people haven't. Um, but yes, that's, that's where I became a Christian. So from an early age, church and community has had a massive influence in my life. It's made me who I am today. I've been blessed to have so many individuals and groups of people, even till now, pour into my life and invest in me. So at the Holy Bible Club this week, um, we have been talking on having no fear because God is, and so on. And each day we've been having um, a new new saying because I will have no fear because God is, and so on. On Monday, we learned I will have no fear because God saves from the story of Noah. On Tuesday, we learned I will have no fear because God keeps his promises from the story of Sarah and Abraham being able to have a baby, which would be called Isaac. On Wednesday, we learned, I will have no fear because God provides from the story of Abraham not having to sacrifice Isaac, and instead God, God sent a lamb. On Thursday, we learned, I will have no fear because God makes a way from the story of Moses and the first Passover. On Friday, we learned, I will have no fear because God is, wi is with me from the story of Joshua as he prepares to lead God's people into a new land. So factoring that all in, deciding on what to talk today. So today I'm going to talk about, I will have no fear because God sends a community that cares. I'll repeat that. I will have no fear because God sends a community that cares. 
Uh, if you'd like to bow your heads, I'm just going to pray before we dive into the, the Bible. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you have brought us all together in this moment, here and now. Thank you that we have community and that you send community that cares. Father, as we dive into this word, let it speak to us, your holy living word. Let it speak to us now, Father, and open our hearts and our minds so that only you and your word remain. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles or if you have them on your phone, uh, you can turn with me to Mark chapter 3, and uh, verse 13 to 19. And if you'd just like to follow along, the 12 apostles. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the 12. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, um, which are also known as the sons of thunder, due to just their, their well-being and, and having no fear. There was Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, or also known as Nathaniel, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. So here we have our disciples. When I was first asked to take the sermon for today, I started thinking and praying for what I could and should talk about. Instantly, I felt this, this word community kept repeating in my head over and over and over again. And from being here this week, from chatting to, to some of you, I see why, that God has, has has put this message on my heart and in my head to share with the rest of you. So I started pushing this idea and this thought, and then I landed on the disciples. Or the apostles, which comes from the Greek apostolos, meaning person sent. Person sent. You see, the disciples were chosen by Jesus as his special followers who would go forth and spread Jesus' teachings. They had authority to spread Jesus' teachings and his word and his truth. See, the, the disciples, to me, are probably one of the best examples of how community should be. From the passage in Mark, we see our first point on how God sends community that cares, and that is community is a people. Community is a people. Because you see, the disciples weren't all the top theologians um, or the highest ranking officials or the best generals, the best warriors, the most articulated. It really was a, a merry band of men. So let's, let's kind of break this down. Let's, let's take a dive into who the disciples were that Jesus called. First off, we're introduced to Peter, or known as Simon Peter. He was quite an outspoken fisherman. It stated that he was quite bold and a bit more assertive. Um, just, a, just a fisherman though. Andrew was Simon Peter's brother. And uh, while less outspoken, he was infinitely passionate about God. And in fact, without Andrew, Simon Peter may not have been introduced to God and to Jesus because it actually says that Andrew introduced him because of his heart for God, which was already there. He introduced his brother to Jesus. Then we meet the, the next few. James, the elder brother of John, was also a fisherman. And it is also stated that he is part of Jesus' inner three with John and Simon Peter. Next up, we, we meet John. Um, John wrote a, a fair few books in the New Testament, one probably the most notable being Revelation. And he has also mentioned love more than any other New Testament author. Remember that, remember that word, love. We'll come back to that later on. Next up, we meet uh, Philip. Now, there isn't a lot known about Philip, but in John 1, 43, 
It says very simply, The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. I love how that says, The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. See, it wasn't that Jesus was on his way somewhere and was like, Oh, you know what? I'll stop off. It wasn't that, you know, someone's told me about this guy, Philip, and oh, yeah, I need to go see him. No, he woke up, decided to go to Galilee to find Philip. And Philip with his close friend Nathaniel, or Bartholomew. See, Jesus also knew one, one thing um, about those two was that they were searching for Jesus. Jesus found them. Jesus came to them. He met them. He met them halfway. Next up, we meet, we, we meet Matthew, and this is where it gets interesting. See, Matthew was a, a dishonest tax collector. Now, tax collectors in this time weren't liked um, by the people. Generally, they were quite dishonest, would usually charge you more, more tax so that they could take some for themselves. They could skim a bit off the top. Um, and they would also give some to the Romans to be like, all right, look, I'll give you some money. Just leave me alone, um, which the Romans took. So that's the kind of people that Jesus went to. He went to the tax collectors. Next up, we meet Thomas, um, often called Doubting Thomas. Um, now, Thomas was, was skeptical of a lot of things. However, I, I can't say I fully blame him. I know if I, was, if I was here, I'd probably be quite like Thomas. However, he kind of goes against us as we turn to John chapter 11. verse 11 to 16. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. Another wee argument for Thomas, uh, chapter 14, 1 to 6, and also in John. Let not, this is from, from Jesus, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. That, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you see, Thomas, Thomas did have concern for the world. He was saying, Lord, like, why, why are you just going to reveal yourself to us? Like, Surely you get so many more followers if you, you showed the world in this, this mighty triumph. But that's not what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted faith. He wanted trust in him and belief in him. Next up, we meet James. Now, James probably doesn't get the one of the best reps. Um, he's known as James the Less. I don't know about you, but that's not a name I'd like to be known by. Now, there isn't much said about him. But in that way, there's a lot said about him. See, Jesus still picked him. Now, Jesus didn't just have like 13 people and, okay, well, pick the 12 that, that smile the best or put their hands up first. No, Jesus had a lot of followers, and yet he still picked James. So even though there's not a lot said about James, he still picked him, and that is important. Uh, next up, we meet Simon the Zealot. Um, he was a political, political activist who had an intense passion and courage. 
which he, which he had for Israel. But he gave that up when he met Jesus and decided to take that intense passion and courage and give it to Jesus. Next up, we meet Judas, son of James, um, in John 14, uh, 21 to 24. It goes as so, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, this, this bit does make me laugh a wee bit, brackets not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. So you see, Judas, Judas did have care for the world. He wanted to know why, why would Jesus not just share himself to the world, but as I, I said earlier, that's not what it's about. It's not about that. Next up, and um, last um, and least, we, we meet the, the most infamous disciple, Judas Iscariot, and known quite simply as the traitor. Now, apart from him being the traitor, there's, there's little known of him. We do know, however, that he spent three years, just as all the other disciples, he spent three years physically as close to Jesus as possible but he never gave him his heart. See, Judas gave, tried to give him his life, tried to de devote his time to Jesus, but he never gave him his heart. And that's, that's the important thing. He never gave his love. He betrayed Jesus. Um, we know that he never gave his heart because he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which roughly is the same as $200. For $200, he gave up someone he'd spent three years following. So to see, we've got the disciples. They show us how community is just a group of people united by a love of Jesus. We had tax collectors. We had fishermen. We had political activists. We had people that, that don't even have their job description. We don't know what they did but they were united by a love of Jesus. The one common factor among all of them is they all met Jesus, and Jesus met them. Jesus met them, and their lives were transformed. They changed. So we have the disciples to learn from, and um, we also have Judas Iscariot to learn from as well. We have the disciples on how we should be, how we should give our lives to Jesus, and we've got Judas, how we should not. How it is about our love of Jesus that unites us. So you see, when we are surrounded by a community of Christians, of Jesus-loving, centered people, then we will have no fear. How can we have fear if we are surrounded by people the same as us who love Jesus? How can we have fear in that? But you see, we can't keep this gospel, this, this truth, the way, the truth, and the life. We can't keep this to ourselves, which leads us to my next point of community goes out. Community goes out. You see, the disciples didn't keep the good news to themselves, which is what Jesus commands. If you'd like to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to read from 16 to 20. And this is titled, The Great Commission. So this is, this is, Jesus has come back, and now he's telling his disciples, right, you've seen it, I've proved it, it's been done, I've resurrected, I've beaten death, now I'm commanding you to go out. You have the authority to do so. Go out. And it goes as follows. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Now, th it, it kind of, it's a bit of a gray area, but there were more followers kind of in that time 
and it's kind of sad that the 11 were the ones that truly, truly believed. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This doesn't just say, right, I've done my bit, you know, I've done the hard part, away you go. And I don't know about you, but I take immense comfort in that. Because if it was up to me, well, that it's not up to me, so we can be glad about that. But he also doesn't say, keep this to yourself. Don't keep this truth to yourselves. He says, go make disciples of all nations. And also, he says, I am with you always. I am with you always to the end of the age. You see, a community that cares goes into the world, which could even be five meters away from you, or sometimes even closer. Which brings me to kind of my, my final, final point. A true community that cares is a community that pours into each other. I'm going to repeat that. A true community that cares is a community that pours into each other. Over the past week in our team times and evenings, we've been reading over um, kind of Hebrews, and we've been learning about people that put faith in action. And it's, it's kind of summarized in Hebrews chapter 13, um, verse 5 to 8. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. I'll repeat that a little bit. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. It goes on. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as he was with the disciples all those years ago, he is still the same right now. And guess what? He's going to be the same tomorrow and years after that. He is the same today and forever. If you get anything from this talk this morning, it is this. A community that cares is a community that pours into each other, which, to clarify, doesn't have a job description. And it isn't up to one person or a few. It has no age limit. It has no previous experience required. There is no contract. It simply says to love one another, to pour in to each other. We've all had, somewhere along the line, we've had people invest in us. I've had many. But don't let it fall on deaf ears. Take it and run a mile with it and spread that. Because a community that cares is a community that pours into each other. Because it couldn't be clearer right here on the page, as it said earlier, and you might, you might see a theme in all this, Jesus is with us all the time. Jesus is with us all the time. That is not part-time or only on the weekdays or whatever it is. No, as if it were being shouted at us 
if I started screaming now, that is what it is like. It is all the time Jesus is with us, just as he was, just as he is, and just as he will be. I would like to invite the, the band back on stage. Just to kind of wrap up everything I've said, to close off, there is a quote from Coretta Scott King, the wife of Martin Luther King Jr. and was also a civil rights activist. And in a few words, she's, she's more or less summarized exactly what I've, I've said. And she says this, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. I'll say that again. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. To wrap this all up, to summarize, a community is a people that goes out. So a community is a people that goes out and pours into each other. Goes out and pours into each other. My final thought. It is by love of Jesus, and that is a recurring theme in all of this, that Jesus is the same and loves us, just as he did, just as he does, and just as he will. And from that love from Jesus, it is by the whole world can then experience community. They can experience a people. They can experience going out and they can experience pouring into each other. Community is not just within these four walls. It's not just in Exodus. It's not just Northern Ireland and Ireland. It is the world. Because a community that cares is a community that pours into each other. And ultimately, is a community that cares is a community that loves one another. Well, thank you, James, for that message. That was um, really good. Um, just to learn about like community and. Um, you yeah, know, I think that that's obviously super important, like how we aren't just the community here, but the community is like everywhere. And we should be able to go out and we should be able to spread our community and make that community just grow in Jesus' love. So, you yeah, know, that's amazing. Um, <coughs> we're just going to go back into a time of worship. Um,
invite the guys to come up again that uh, have been here this week, and we just simply want to we just simply want to pray for this island, um, just uh, one by one. I'm going to read Psalm 22. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. God, we realize this land is yours. Everything and everyone, it's yours. And we pray healing for our land. We pray peace in our land. We pray strongholds to be broken. We pray for faith, salvation in this land, for people to turn from their ways and put your trust in you, God. Father, I pray that we consistently remind ourselves that we are a community, that it is not just Bally Fermit, that it stretches to the world, Lord, that we are all one in you and you alone. We are your people. We are your community, Father, together as one. Dear Lord, I pray you will help all the Christians in Ireland to remain strong in their faiths and that they will be good witnesses for you, Lord. And I pray the way that they would live their lives would bring more people to you. Amen. Yeah, Lord, just want to thank you for this church, Lord, and everyone who we have met throughout the week and how welcoming and blessed we have felt through every single person whether it's Craig and his family, Gabe, Gabrielle with his help through the kids club and just anyone who's helped with just make this life a lot easier this week with us, Lord. And yeah, just been so, such a blessing to have them all. Amen. Yeah, Father, I want to pray for all the families in Ireland, Father. May you just bless those households with your peace and your love. Father, for those who are non-Christian households, Father, pray you just just bless them with this realization that there's a God-shaped hole in their hearts, Father. I pray you'll just help people um, like this church, Father. Just be a light um, to this community, Father. And I thank you for what you're doing already, Father. So, Lord, just bless this church, bless those families. In your name, amen. Dear God, I just pray for all the people who aren't Christians yet here in Ireland or even here in this church. I just pray, Lord, that they'll find your presence and that they'll find your love. And I just pray that... Um, the Christians here will just be able to show that to them and that they'll just um, bring them to you. Amen. Dear God, I just pray that you'll bring comfort to the Christians who are here in Ireland. Um, it may seem a bit isolating at times to not have a large amount of Christians surrounding them, but Lord, I just ask that um, they will lean on you and that they will find a community in their own churches, Lord. Um, I ask that you will give them the courage to speak out their faith if they're asked um, and that you will just add to their number so that they can grow, Lord. In your name, amen. Dear God, thank you so much for blessing us with a successful week of Kids Club. I pray for the children's family and the message of your good news, dear God, will just continue on within their households. And Father, I just pray for protection over these families as they continue on with their summers. Lord, I thank you for Bally Fermit. I pray for all the kids and young people growing up in Dublin and in Ireland, Lord. These are people who will be the next generation of Christians, God, and I pray that you give them the confidence and wisdom to be able to step out with their faith and trusting you, Lord. I pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power at work within us within this nation, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We just want to say thank you as a church to the Exodus team. They have given up their time and preparation to come here. They have given up the last nine days of their lives here in Dublin. They've run the kids club. These guys, for such young people, have had such an amazing attitude, a heart to serve God. We're so grateful for them. We have a couple of gifts just for them if we want to give those out, and we can show our appreciation. We're so grateful. 
um, to you for everything you've done, for staying in the church, for showering in the leisure center, for, <laughs> for absolutely everything. We really appreciate you all. So thank you. We love it when teams come. Uh, we love it even more when they come and bless the community the way that this team has. So thank you again, Exodus. And we have a couple more people to thank just quickly. So uh, if we can have Martina and Rob up here, please. And Gideon and Kelly and Alan and Sandra and Roz. These guys have cooked for the team this week. And we just have a small gift to say thank you to you as well. Rosie and Lizzie are busy today. So, um, but let's give it up for these guys. Yeah, thank you so much for cooking, hosting, everything that you have done, the time that you have spent, and everything as well. We really appreciate you all. They've been well fed, as a number of them have said. <laughs> so that's over to you guys. And yes, one more round of applause, please. We're so blessed in this church. So thank you so much. Gabrielle's going to come give us some announcements. Um, you guys can take your seats. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, this is so excited. We are just finishing our service, and thank you to stay with us and worship with us, yes. Thank you for the Exodus team and everyone. Um, uh, Alan, just stay with me for a second. Um, I'm just gonna go room for a couple of announcements. I'm gonna start with you, Alan, if you wanna share a few things, yeah, quickly. And so uh, just to say, I just want to say thanks to the Exodus team myself, and uh, it was just an amazing team that came down. I've heard nothing but laughter all week, <laughs> but not just in the community, you know, in every moment, even during the Coogan, Sandra had her kids down, and they were just so open and engaging and genuine in how they welcomed the kids and, you know, helped the kids along the way. And I was just truly, truly blessed. And I know from sitting out in the family day, and even my sister Lindsay, like all her friends and all, they really wanted to come down as a result of like the experience that they had because of the hearts in which you are operating now. So I just wanted to really say well done. But um, as I was listening to this morning, uh, I was listening to bowling, and I just have a few announcements. I'm actually working for uh, the Joshua Program. It's a faith-based community initiative. But um, as I was listening this morning, the, the love really is what came to me this morning, you know, first when Bolin was praying, he was talking about, you know, that there's people out there who don't know the love of Jesus like we know it. And I was thinking, you know, it's, it's up to us to be able to go out into the community and use whatever we have, uh, you know, our own abilities and strengths to be able to bring that love to people. And as I was listening to James Dan Sheridan, he was saying that, you know, the apostles were all of one accord in their love for Jesus. I was thinking about that, and he's, it's very, very true, but I was watching The Chosen with Sandra. I don't know whether any is watching it. It's very, very good. It's a program about Jesus and the disciples. It's really, really good. And what struck me in the program is that they were all united, not only by the love of Jesus, but also with a passion to bring Jesus to people. And that's what us at the, the Joshua program is all about. We're, we're looking because, like, the, the, the poster itself goes on to say about, like, people who are caught in a rut, you know, depending on benefit, have life control and issues. But really what the program is about, it's a program of salvation. It's a 16-week teaching on Jesus. It's about introducing people to Jesus, people who don't know Jesus. I've done the last two rounds of the program, and out of each program, every single member in the program gave their lives to the Lord. Each member, each person, participant on the program was baptized. So it's just a fantastic program, and it's really, really good for people who are just coming in and are searching for that love that Bolin was talking about. And it's delivered in a way that, you know, there's no pressure. It's actually done. It's funny. It's the way it's done. It's done like in a courtroom setting. We present loads of evidence for Christ backed up by personal testimonies of, you know, how Jesus has impacted people. And then people are kind of hopefully, with the help of the Holy Spirit, it led to a place where they feel that they want to invite Jesus into our hearts. And... Like, it's not just for people who haven't found Jesus. Like, there's Christians who are stuck in a bit of a rut as well and a bit lost and they're not sure about the next moves that they need to make. And I can tell you, the course content is really, really good. So if there's anyone out there, Christians or people who don't know the Lord yet, really, if you, there's a coffee morning on this Thursday between 11 and 1 o'clock. So if you want any, any more information about it all, just come and see me. And uh, I'd love to have a chat with us. All right, thanks. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Excellent.
All right, more, more announcement. Um, youth, so we are going to run two more weeks, and then we are going to have um, a small break of three weeks, and then we are going coming back on the second week of September. Really excited for the next season of uh, Great, Communi uh, Great Commission Youth. Um, yes, so uh, pre-service, prayer every Sunday, 10 o'clock. You're very welcome to come. Um, and then Tuesday we have the Women's Bible Study at 11 o'clock. And then at 12 o'clock we go for an intercessory meeting, intercessory prayer. And then I speak to Nora if you have any question on how that works. And then info. Right. Yeah, no, you're good. And then, okay, information card is just at the back. And please fill it out. If you can scan the QR code, that will be very helpful. If you cannot, no worries. Just fill it out and give that to me, no problem. And it's also a membership form. Uh, it's really interesting. If you want to know what is that about, uh, please uh, speak with Rob and with Craig. And then uh, WhatsApp group, we normally deliver all the information, announcement every week uh, during, uh, through the WhatsApp group. So if you want to be in the WhatsApp group, uh, speak with me, Rob, Craig, and you're very welcome to be part of that group. And that's it for us. So I'm going to invite you to uh, stand up with me. Let's have a quick prayer, and then let's just finish this service. God, I just want to say thank you for your, uh, for your presence, God, for this service, for this time together. And as we're finishing up uh, this meeting, please send us home with your joy, with your bless, with your, uh, with your presence. And be with us in this week, in every moment. Be with us in our workplace, in our school, in our college. And keep your presence with us, um, in us and upon us. In the name of Jesus, we just pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, see you next week. Thank you for coming. All right.